a significant diplomatic engagement, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and New Zealand Prime Minister Christopher Luxon convened in New Delhi to bolster bilateral relations. Their discussions encompassed enhancing defense cooperation, expanding trade, and maintaining peace in the Indo-Pacific region. Both leaders agreed to initiate negotiations for a free trade agreement aimed at boosting mutual trade and investment in sectors such as dairy, food processing, and pharmaceuticals. They also emphasized the importance of institutionalizing defense and security cooperation through joint exercises and training programs. Additionally, the leaders underscored their commitment to a free, open, secure, and prosperous Indo-Pacific, reflecting shared strategic interests in the region. The Ministry of Home Affairs has recently updated its list of banned organizations under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, 1967 or UAPA. This comprehensive list now includes 67 groups, 45 designated as terrorist organizations under Section 35 of the UAPA, and 22 classified as unlawful associations under Section 3 Clause 1 of the same Act. Notable additions encompass entities such as Babur Khalsa International, Lushkrutaba, Jaish Muhammad, including its manifestation, People's Anti-Fascist Front, and the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. This update underscores the government's ongoing efforts to combat terrorism and safeguard national security. Ajit Doval, India's national security advisor, recently met former U.S. Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard in New Delhi. The discussion focused on enhancing bilateral security cooperation between India and the United States. Following this, Doval chaired a high-level security meeting to review ongoing national security issues and strategies. The meeting highlighted concerns related to regional stability and global security challenges, emphasizing strengthening ties between the two nations in addressing common security threats. The engagement also underscored India's commitment to strategic partnerships in global defense and counterterrorism efforts. Lockheed Martin has pledged to complete the delivery of all 24 MH60 or Seahawk helicopters to the Indian Navy by the end of 2026, ahead of the previously anticipated schedule. As of now, 10 helicopters are operational with the Indian Navy. The MH-60R Seahawk is a versatile maritime helicopter designed for anti-submarine warfare, anti-surface warfare, and search and rescue missions. Equipped with advanced avionics, sensors, and weapons systems, these helicopters are expected to enhance the Indian Navy's operational capabilities significantly. The procurement of these helicopters was formalized through a foreign military sales agreement between the Indian and United States governments, valued at approximately $2.6 billion. The remaining helicopters are scheduled to be delivered by the end of 2026, reinforcing India's maritime defense capabilities. Sri Lanka has expressed interest in collaborating with India to enhance its local small arms manufacturing capabilities. The Sri Lankan government is keen to boost its defense production and reduce reliance on foreign imports. As part of this initiative, Sri Lanka aims to partner with Indian defense firms, particularly those experienced in small arms manufacturing, to transfer technology and expertise. This collaboration could significantly strengthen Sri Lanka's defense sector, providing more self-reliance in producing essential military equipment. The proposal underscores the growing defense ties between the two nations. The Tejas Mk-2 fighter jet is set to feature a blend of indigenous and advanced weaponry, as revealed in a new poster. The jet will be equipped with cutting-edge systems, including the Astra air-to-air -air missiles, lightning targeting pods, and an array of advanced avionics and sensors. This development showcases India's growing defense capabilities as it moves towards greater self-reliance in military technology. The Tejas Mk-2, an upgraded version of the Tejas Mk-1, will enhance the Indian Air Force's combat readiness with its potent mix of homegrown and advanced weaponry, further bolstering the country's strategic defense assets. The Indian Air Force has set a goal to expand its fighter fleet to 60 squadrons by 2047, coinciding with India's centenary of independence. This initiative aims to bolster national security amid evolving regional challenges. Currently operating 31 squadrons, the IF plans to nearly double its fleet over the next two decades. Key to this expansion are indigenous aircraft programs, the light combat aircraft Tejas, and the AMCA. The IF has ordered 180 Tejas variants and intends to induct over 200 AMCA units, 
encompassing both MK1 and MK2 versions, by 2047, forming 10 to 12 squadrons of stealth fighters. This strategy underscores India's commitment to self-reliance in defense manufacturing. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, HAL, is ramping up its production capacity of the indigenous Tejas fighter jets to meet an ambitious delivery schedule. The organization plans to deliver 12 Tejas jets in 2025, with an annual target of 20 jets starting in 2026. To achieve this, HAL has expanded its production lines and addressed component availability issues that have previously hindered progress. The company has been working on overcoming supply chain constraints, which are critical for the timely assembly and delivery of the aircraft. The Tejas, India's homegrown light combat aircraft, is integral to the Indian Air Force's modernization efforts. The Indian government is committed to bolstering the domestic defense sector, with house efforts seen as a major step toward increasing self-reliance in defense production. This increase in Tejas production will further enhance India's defense capabilities in the coming years. India's advancements in gallium nitride-based active electronically scanned array radar technology have opened discussions about enhancing the Russian Su-57 fighter jet's capabilities. A senior Indian Air Force official indicated that India's UTOM gallium nitride-based AESA radar, developed by the Defense Research and Development Organization for the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft Program, could be integrated into the Su-57, potentially surpassing the performance of its current radar systems. This integration aligns with India's strategy to incorporate indigenous technology into its defense systems, offering logistical and economic benefits by standardizing radar systems across various aircraft, including the Tejas, AMCA, and potentially upgraded Su-30 MKIs and Mirage 2000s. While Russia has formally offered the Su-57 to India with provisions for technology transfer, the IF is still evaluating its options, considering factors such as operational requirements and compatibility with existing platforms. Rolls-Royce has expressed a strong interest in collaborating with India on the co-development of a next-generation engine for the AMCA program. This partnership aims to transcend mere intellectual property rights transfer by empowering India to create and own critical combat engine technology. Such an initiative would enhance India's self-reliance in defense and open avenues for future upgrades and exports. The AMCA, a fifth-generation stealth fighter jet under development by the Defense Research and Development Organization and Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, is central to India's defense modernization efforts. Rolls-Royce's proposal aligns with India's Atmanirbhar Bharat vision, potentially reducing reliance on foreign suppliers and bolstering indigenous defense capabilities. The Rafale jets, procured from France, come with the Thales RB-2 ASA radar, which is considered highly advanced. However, India's defense research agencies have been working on the UTAM ASA radar, which is expected to match or surpass current capabilities in electronic warfare, target tracking, and multi-role combat efficiency. The inability to replace the existing radar with an indigenous alternative is primarily due to restrictions on modifying critical French defense systems without explicit approval. Experts suggest that this situation highlights broader challenges India faces in achieving self-reliance in defense technology especially when dealing with foreign military procurements that come with stringent IP rights. While discussions for deeper collaboration with France continue, India may need to negotiate specific agreements to incorporate indigenous technology into future fighter jet upgrades without violating contractual terms. That's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.